So hypnosis and self-efficacy. This is a video about hypnosis and self-efficacy, how the two fit together and how sometimes they can be at odds with each other, or at least seemingly to be at odds with each other. Now, I got into NLP and hypnosis some time back, not because I had any desire to be a hypnotherapist or a change worker or anything like that. The thought never entered my head. I had no intention of doing that whatsoever. I got into hypnosis and NLP for myself. And I've said this before, I was interested in developing myself. I was interested in upping my power in life to make the kind of differences I wanted to make, to have the kind of experiences I wanted to make. I was interested in raising my self-efficacy in terms of being and doing and living life and all of that kind of thing. Very selfish reasons for getting into hypnosis and NLP. But once I trained formally, I did a lot of study uh, for many years informally before officially training, but when I kind of officially trained in NLP, did practitioner, master practitioner, these kind of things, I decided it would be interesting to set myself up in change work, doing change work for people. I thought it would be a great way to deepen my skills, again, purely selfish. And I also thought that it was an interesting and useful application, helping people make changes in their lives because I was so interested in making changes in mine. So I set myself up initially as an NLP practitioner, then a hypnotherapist, and I would use um, all the kind of classic hypnotherapy protocols and many of the classic frames and this kind of thing in the work that I did. Now, something started to bug me about this kind of work. You know, on some level it was effective, but I always wanted to go deeper. I wanted to go further with people. And the real reason why is because I was interested in self-efficacy and transforming myself so as I could show up in the world as the person I needed to be to make the things happen that I wanted to have happen. And I wanted to do this for other people. And I really kind of felt that there was something in some of the classic frames around hypnosis that was subtly disempowering, subtly undermining. And let me, let me talk about what these, these are or might be. First of all, there's the idea from classic hypnosis, because aside from NLP and the Ericksonian stuff, I also studied classic direct hypnosis. Now in the classic direct hypnosis model, the hypnotist is a major player, is a major power figure. I often refer to people, old school direct hypnotists, as power hypnotists, because it's the hypnotist that has the power. This is the unconscious framing, or at least it's the hypnosis that has the power. It's either the hypnotist or the hypnosis or some combination of the two. So the person comes in to be transformed passively. They're there to have something done to them by a powerful hypnotist or by a powerful process called hypnotism. Now this, I'm thinking to myself, how does this fit? Y you know, even when we're successful in making a change with somebody, how does it change how they show up in life? How does it change them in terms of their self-efficacy? Or does it subtly undermine their self-efficacy or reinforce a lack of it by suggesting they can't change themselves? By suggesting it's not them, they don't have the power, they need to go see a hypnotist, they need to undergo a special process that does it for them. You get that? The hypnosis is doing it for them. The hypnotist is doing it for them. The process is doing it for them. How does that fit with self-efficacy? You see, that was in the back of my brain because I'd done a lot of self-change and nobody had done it for me. I'd done it. I'd been in the driving seat, you see, and that made a difference. That meant that it went deep. It meant that, that, you know, I had a capability, a generative capability to continue to change myself in my life. I didn't really make extensive use of hypnotists or therapists or NLPers to help me out, you know, very occasionally, but not, not often. That kind of bugged me on, on some level. But, you know, less of a problem for me because I had that Ericksonian influence. Now, of course, with Ericksonian approaches, it's no longer the hypnotist that's claiming the power and the glory, um, or even, you know, the hypnotism to a certain degree, the state of trance is a powerful thing. This is an external thing, the state of trance. It's not you that's doing it, it's the trance in combination with your unconscious mind, right? This is the big Ericksonian frame. Your unconscious mind is powerful, it has all the resources it needs. That's an improvement, isn't it? Because it's something of yours, something within you, but it still isn't you. Still isn't you in totality. 
that has the power to shape and transform your life. It still isn't you. It's your unconscious mind. Like, like as if it's some kind of a genie sat in a bottle just waiting for somebody to rub the bottle in the right way and ask it in the right way. As if it was sat there all the time saying, oh, sorry, did you want to change something? You only needed to ask. You only need to use the right kinds of language patterns and put me in the right kind of trance and ask and I'd have changed it. You know, so I sound like I'm knocking that frame. Don't, don't get me wrong, that model, that approach, it can do great work, there's no question about it. But for me, in terms of my bias towards self-efficacy, there was something about that that just wasn't quite sitting right. So for this reason, it led me over time to be doing less and less change work from those sorts of frames, less and less hypnotherapy, so to speak, and more and more coaching. Because coaching is about, so far as I'm concerned, working with someone in their totality, having them show up, up their levels of consciousness, bring out the best in them, have them bring out the best in themselves so they can start being the kind of person they want to be because they choose to be and because they've been a proactive participant in the process of becoming the person they want to be and showing up the way they want to show up and engaging with the world the way they want to engage with the world. I love doing this kind of work, this kind of transformative work. I love it. And uh, my street hypnosis demonstrations, sort of street hypnosis, started to change their flavor and I started to do stuff more like uh, unbendable arm demonstration, which is change the image you're making with your mind and notice how it changes your reality and you become stronger rather than the old stuff which was try and lift that hand and find that you can't you see um it, although even when i did that old stuff you'll know if you've got the hypnosis mastery program step five was always giving the power back to the clients and it's always been an important thing for me so anyway very recently i don't know six eight months ago i got back into thinking, now I've moved away from those old school hypnosis frames and this kind of thing, and I'm doing things differently. I'm enjoying my work more, but I was also aware that there was some power in that old stuff, some power. And I didn't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. I didn't want to leave a whole bunch of stuff behind. So over the last six, eight months, I've been looking at bringing hypnosis back into the work that I do, back into the transformative work that I do, and working on finding ways to, to really utilize the power that hypnosis has without taking it away from the power that the person has, without there being uh, that dichotomy suggested, indirectly suggested. So I'm finding ways of playing with it. And also I'm shifting my own focus and saying, you know, it doesn't have to be one thing across the board all the time. We can toggle around, we can be playful, I can be more like low-key, I can be mischievous, I can, you know, we can trick people into feeling they don't have power one moment, but then bring it back in and boom, have it come back in with a real impact. So I'm looking at different ways of playing this out. And the other weekend, not the, a couple of three weeks back now, I was at Change Phenomena, the hypnotism conference set up by Head Hacking, Anthony Jackman and Kev Sheldrake, and Adam Eason did a presentation. I've known Adam for a, a few years and he's a fantastic guy. This presentation, Ah, oh, this presentation got me really excited. One of the reasons why, not only does Adam have a lot of beliefs about how hypnosis works that overlap with my beliefs about how hypnosis works, but he was talking about hypnosis and self-efficacy. Empowering the client so as they understood right from the get-go that the hypnotic capacity was theirs, that they have the power and having them awaken to that more and more and more. And this was exciting for me to hear how Adam is using hypnosis to up self-efficacy, bringing those two things together. Now, I don't know exactly how Adam goes about that or does that. You know, this, is, this was a short presentation, a short one-hour presentation, but you can bet that I wanted to know and it got me really excited and it's had me revive something I haven't done for a long time, which is the old hypnosis conversations, live hypnosis conversations. So. Adam and I are having a live hypnosis conversation next Tuesday, 7.30 UK time, 7.30 at night UK time. We're gonna have an hour, hour and a half conversation about hypnosis and self-efficacy. I'm also gonna be going delving into Adam's perspectives on hypnosis, um, his cognitive behavioral approach to hypnosis, also how Adam came to that approach as well. I'm interested in the journey and I think that will be educational both for me and for you. And um, no doubt we're going to be kicking some stuff around. I'll be sharing some of my ideas around hypnosis and self-efficacy and how they can fit 
together as well. So join us on that call. Join us live. It's going to be 7.30 next Tuesday. The dates, the times, everything you need will be below the video. If you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be a link through to the page on Hypnosis Without Trance. If you're watching it on Hypnosis Without Trance, you will have all of the details to get on the webinar on the into that conversation uh, right here on the page. Okay, looking forward to that. Looking forward to having you with me and Adam discussing hypnosis and self-efficacy. It is going to be mind-blowing.